Construction of the Blair Enterprise Incorporated C-Series Patriot Class Planetary Frigate is underway. I must say, this is a good choice of vessel class and design for the challenges we face currently and in the time to come. I can tell by your life signs that you are excited over the results of your work so far. And due to your diligence, this project has come to fruition in good order. Well, I have learned, Alfred, one thing, that if uh, I crash a spaceship, it might take me a while to get back up into, sp back up into space. So, anyways, the point being is not only will it help, help me navigate not crashing on a planet, because it's got this a uh, gravity aligner but it also has a lot of memory space so that this particular type of frigate is made a lot for scouting and exploration I could also slap a huge portion of your AI protocols and memory banks and all of that other good stuff just download it right into here that way we could shut you down at the planetary station where you know, you can come along with me and you don't have to have some sort of communications and then we can just download your protocol or try to establish communications when we are able. Are you implying the fact that my central data core can be uploaded to the frigate? Then at a later date it may be possible to integrate communications so that I can then network my data capacity with the planetary central core. If so, then this is indeed beneficial to the current investigation and struggle that we are in currently. Alfred, you always have such eloquence with words and can say things so much better than I can. <laughs> See here now, Sparky still has a good lifespan left in him. See, we get to grind this up. Now, here's the thing, I put on a... Uh, uh, the connector to throw out everything to collect everything and to throw it out immediately so I don't get overloaded and then since it's easier for the nanites to uh, pick up the material as it falls onto the ground rather than trying to grind it up and, and disassemble it that way into the components it'll be a lot easier for us to salvage all these parts that we have brought over you know I think this is a good idea I'm always thinking man I'm telling you Alfred I'm always thinking Master Wolf and Ray, even though you have adapted Sparky to function in atmospheric and gravitational conditions, the drone is not well suited for the aforementioned stresses. Nonetheless, you continue to make it work. This is one of your many strengths that I admire. However, I have run simulations and variables based off of the performance of your design, and I ask that we review these simulations at a later date. I know this is more work for you, but the end result may be potentially of greater benefit. Alfred, you really just don't like Sparky, do you? I'm going to tell you, Sparky's my buddy, and he does a fine job. Look at it. I mean, he's sitting there grinding these things up, and you just got to work with his capabilities, man. My old grandpa used to say, don't, don't, fix, don't fix something that ain't broke, and... You know, he, he was born way back in the 21st or beginning of the 21st century, so he wouldn't know about these things. Okay, okay, Alfred, I don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to hear it. I know that the uh, bit is busted, but grinding bits break all the time, and that has nothing to do with how underpowered or underperforming Sparky is. All I gotta do is just put on a new bit and she'll be good to go. So I don't wanna hear about how it is that this thing is all not up to par and be, you know, using the fact that I broke the bit, you know? Oh my. It is a true statement that a grinder bit breaks often under duress, so no fault can be placed on your fondness for Sparky's particular design specifications. It could be said that a more efficient drone with better capabilities would significantly reduce the frequency a grinder bit is placed under such duress. Of course, this is in no way related to the current situation, Master Wolf and Ray. Certainly. A broken grinder but is a common occurrence as you clearly have stated
Okay, okay, Alfred. You don't need to hammer it in. You've made your point already, okay? I get it. Really? Why? 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 Why does it have to be like this all the time? Why does it always have to be every difficulty? I now put my thing through the roof and, you know, probably smashed the whole underside of Sparky. You know, everything's all broken up and now I got a big old hole in the roof and I gotta patch that up too. Oh my god. You know, sometimes. I just want to. From your vital signs, I am detecting that you are becoming agitated. Remember, the Nanite Factory module can deconstruct the scrap on its own. The only reason you are up late at night working on Spark is because you want to help facilitate the deconstruction process. Perhaps, you should not work so hard, and rest. That way, in the morning, the Nanite Factory module will have made significant progress on the task at hand. Also, you'll be in better condition to deal with the stresses that arise since you will not be in a fatigued condition. Please, Master Wolf and Ray, heed my advice. You know what, Alfred? You are always the voice of reason. And, you know, you're probably right. I'm just tired. I'm cursing up here, and I'm just breaking things, and I'm probably no good for nothing. But... Here's the thing, I'm just going to slap some engines and stuff on here, and I know it's not going to be specification and all of that, but it'll just work, and then we'll scrap Sparky and we'll go through and redesign it, but I still should probably patch up this hole as well. This is indeed a sound course of action. A clear mind can eliminate 90% of all your difficulties. Besides, I see that you used the steel blast door blocks with edge when making repairs to the planetary station. Not only does this actually strengthen the integrity of the area affected, but makes for a unique, scarred look as well. If it is said that the planetary center is my current physical manifestation, such as your body is yours, then I say that I like this hardened look very much. Well, this is the end of Sparky. This little drone has had such a troubled life and I loved him so much, but you know, you were right, Alfred. <laughs> he, he did kind of underperform. And even though I was adapting him, and I think that in my next design, that I'll probably just make it better because I, th I know where I went wrong and you're right we'll go through some of the simulations and we'll see if we'll make another one but hopefully I won't even need to do that because we'll be in space and then we can just make a regular LUD drone. Alfred since we're about ready to go into space here pretty quick I'm gonna be cramped up in that one room for a long time. Solaris is pretty beautiful, so I think I'm going to pack up this orca here, maybe take a road trip around the planet and just kind of see the sights before we just kind of leave it behind us. I mean, our next goal is going to be Europa to get to that inter interstellar uh, communications dish. Master Wolf and Ray, why are you creating this stack of parts? <laughs> I'm creating art, Alfred. This is art, man. My grandpa showed me how to do this once with rocks back in the day. While we are sightseeing on this road trip around Solaris, I would like to have a meaningful conversation with you about the concept of art in relation to the human experience. I enjoy the fact that you tend to lean towards the philosophical aspects of any topic of conversation we have. And such a discussion on this subject would be a great way to pass the time as we witness the natural beauty expressed before us. Would you be interested in this endeavor? Master Wolf and Ray. Alfred, that would be a totally delightful conversation. And as a matter of fact, I think it's quite fitting for this road trip. So, you know, you might have to drive this conversation though, because, you know, I always kind of thought that art is just something that happens naturally to people. You know, some more than others, especially somebody like my grandfather who really understand art. He always would say, the art was just him imitating the natural beauty that he saw around him, and the joy is his expression.
Aristotle had something to say about the non-motivational expression of art imitating in a tangible way the joy of human perception within the natural experience of existence. This Greek philosopher believed that this is a basic human instinct, inherent to any human to appreciate harmony, balance, and rhythm. Here is a direct quote. Imitation, then, is one instinct of our nature. Next, there is the instinct for harmony and rhythm, meters being manifestly sections of rhythm. Persons. Therefore, starting with this natural gift, develop by degrees the special aptitudes till the rude improvisations gave birth to poetry. Wow, those words are beautiful, Alfred. And you know, Aristotle, he was a poet himself, so only he could put something so simple and basic so eloquently, even though it is quite wordy. Uh, you'd have to, you have to admit, that's pretty wordy, the way he puts that. Emmanuel Kant an 18th century Prussian philosopher from then known as Konigsberg and educated with a physical doctorate from the Collegium Friedrichanum, had an even more wordy way of expressing his thoughts on art. It was said of Immanuel Kant that he wanted to prove in a way that would dumbfound the common man, that the common man was right. That was the secret joke of this soul. So brace yourself as I give you this quote from him concerning the subject at hand. Jupiter's eagle, as an example of art, is not, like logical, aesthetic, attributes of an object, the concept of the sublimity and majesty of creation, but rather something else, something that gives the imagination an incentive to spread its flight over a whole host of kindred representations that provoke more thought than admits of expression in a concept determined by words. They furnish an aesthetic idea, which serves the above rational idea as a substitute for logical presentation, but with the proper function, however, of animating the mind by opening out for it a prospect into a field of kindred representation stretching beyond its ken. Oh my god! Alfred, everybody knows that you cannot outword Emmanuel Kant. So, you know, it's getting dark, so I'm thinking I just want to camp outside, and we'll have to pick up this discussion in the morning. But I gotta say, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it's gonna be early morning, and I don't think I can handle so many words bombarding my ears all at once, even though they are so eloquent. Oh, man. Good morning, Alfred. Oh, yeah. This sleeping outside really hit the spot. I get tired of sleeping in that crowd chamber all day. And when I get a chance to be on a nice planet such as this one, where every day is a beautiful day, and I can sleep outside and enjoy some fresh air, that makes all the difference, you know. I'm not really looking forward to being crapped up in that room, breathing processed ice, for the next couple months. Good morning, Master Wolf and Ray. I see that you are in good spirit, and it is noticeable that the good night's sleep outside of the cryogenic chamber a manufactured environment has given you a fresh sense of elation. It is my joy to see this, as it is true that soon this simple pleasure will not be available to you for a long time in the foreseeable future. Well, Alfred, I'm pretty excited to go over there and see those desert area, man. I've, now that i got my business done and everything's taken care of, I'm thinking that if we can go flying through some canyons, that's going to be a lot of great fun. I'm, I'm really excited for that. <laughs> as soon as you are able to be inside the Orca gunship, we will be underway on our second day of this road trip. Alfred, I just got a few more things to do, and then we'll, we'll be on our way. I will say, Master Wolf and Ray, that I was skeptical of the merits of this endeavor when you first mentioned it. After seeing your spirit lift to such a great degree, however, I now realize that this was something we should have done sooner. 
Thank you for sharing this human quality and experience with me. You're welcome, Alfred. I gotta say, you are like the most polite and courteous AI I have ever met. Most AIs tend to be either cold and impassionate or really snarky. But you, on the other hand, are really enjoyable to be around. And I like talking with you and I learn a lot from you. You being around is really a joy for me. What do you think of the canyon below? I find that the color scheme really sets up the desert area ahead. Just the right amount of foliage as the terrain transitions beneath us. Is this an observation that we agree upon? Alfred, I agree with your observation. You state it so clearly and eloquently. It is exactly the way I see it myself. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. Master Wolfenray, did I hear you state a quote from Albert Einstein? Why yes, Alfred, you did hear me correctly. I did state a quote from Albert Einstein. I've got quotes of my own, you know. Even if we were to go down there and take a look at everything that's making this picture display before us, we would never be able to discover everything. So it's really only just a perception. There is so much to it that even though we see it all, we don't really see any of it. Even though we have this picture here before us, there is no way we could ever discover everything that makes it so. Even when I am left, I am still left with a more sense of wonder than when I've discovered. So discovery is always just greater wonder. Your perspective and thoughts truly stimulate my logic, and even though we speak in a different colloquial manner, the meaning of your words are very profound indeed. How it would be as a curiosity of science, art, and discovery to seek all that lays before and beneath us. However, as it is only practical to observe while we are here and now, we are always left in a state of wonder. Truly, this is the full meaning of human art in a non-motivational context. Master Wolfenray, it seems you have the final enlightenment on our philosophical topic. It is getting dark, and we should set down soon for the night. Although I would suggest that we set up camp here, as it is a suitable enough place just over the horizon I am detecting a strange anomaly that seems to be artificial in nature. I cannot get a full reading as the downloaded portion of my gourd does not have the processing capacity, nor does the Orca gunship have the adequate sensor hardware. Furthermore, we are out of communications range of the planetary base, so I must utilize the resources available to me which do not happen to be adequate. What would you like to do, Master Wolfenray, about this current situation? So, you're saying that there is an artificial anomaly up ahead, over the horizon. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Alfred. If it's artificial, then it most likely involves people, so we definitely have to go and investigate. My best sensory input for the Orca gunship is the forward nose camera. If you can place the anomaly within the sensory arc of the camera, I can start running a detailed analysis of the anomaly in question. I will then be better able to provide you with data that may give a better understanding as to what the anomaly is. All right, Alfred. Just give me a moment, and I'll see what I can do. Okay, okay. Easy now. I just want to get up over the top here, so that way if that thing down there has some guns or something, you know, or something hostile, then I don't get shot right away. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Hmm. Well, I think this is gonna be just about as good as it's gonna get. And why don't you start doing your voodoo there, Alfred, okay? I have some data as to the nature of this anomaly. 
though the readings that I have been able to analyze do not have a tangible explanation currently. Even so, I will give you my findings, as you are my human counterpart and may have the ability to understand my data in a way that I am unable to. It seems that this anomaly has the architecture of a pseudo-fantasy cathedral. It is of large dimension, comprised of over 30,000 nanoblocks. Furthermore, I do not see any sign of humanity to have ever inhabited here. Also, analysis of the age of the materials date to only two weeks ago. So if this is accurate, this cathedral has been completely constructed and in existence within this time span. There is a third major discrepancy found from my sensory sweep. It seems that in the attic of the anomaly there is what can only be described as a black hole. Yet instead of the black hole exerting gravitational forces upon the surrounding external area, the black hole itself seems to be contained in a set of two rectangular shapes. Finally, I am detecting life forms in the area. Master Wolf and Ray. Please be careful as you enter this structure. There are too many abnormalities associated with what we have discovered for this to be mere coincidence. An old philosopher once said that when a man carries a tool, and that tool is to be used to destroy a curse that would cause him harm, then this man stands upon ground of ill omen. And I gotta say that even though I like my gun, I like it a lot, whenever I have to use this tool, then obviously there's something bad going on. I can tell right now that as I'm walking down this hall that uh, <laughs> I'm standing up on some really cursed ground. I'm monitoring your suits HUD to assist you. Please, be aware and careful. Oh my god, what is that? I gotta kill it! I gotta go over to some safety here for a second. Let me get over here to some safety. Alfred, are you getting it? Are you getting this? Do you know what that is over there? Are you getting an example of what this might be? It's definitely hostile. Initializing first aid now nights. Rerouting functionality from non-critical protocols to primary biological trauma responses in EVA. Stimulating vital hormone responses and pain inhibitors. Increasing either rapid response poise and control priorities. Finding secondary power route to visual HUD. Out here. I'm hurt bad. Master Wolf and Ray, you must endure. Your vital signs are starting to stabilize, and your internal bleeding has been repaired. I am now running a diagnostic on your EVA suit to best utilize and repair its functionality. Even so, this environment and the life forms that inhabit it are clearly hostile to our presence. Why not retreat, analyze the data we already have, and come back when we are more prepared for the situation at hand? Yeah, you want to do me from the behind like that? Well, die, you stinking bug! Die! Currently, I am only able to patch you up to about 70% of your optimal life readings. The rest will need a full medical station. It is my strong advice that given your current condition and ability to withstand further encounters of such magnitude, that we leave with all due haste. Master Wolf and Ray, please respond. Master Wolf and Ray, you are headed towards the rectangular black hole anomaly and I need for you to respond. Wolf and Ray, wake up. Currently, you are surrounded by many high yield warheads and I need for you to vacate the area with all due haste. These warheads are set to detonate, and your current position will clearly result in your death when they do. I got no time to think about it now. I need to jump. Ouch! Oh, 
okay, Wolf and Ray, you can do it. It's just from here to there. All we gotta do is keep moving. All we gotta do is keep moving. Oh no, the ceiling's falling down on us. Don't think about it. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Don't think about the debris falling on your head. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. We're almost there. Don't worry about the spiders that are crawling up underneath your feet. Just keep moving. Alfred, I do not know what happened to me back in there, but I can tell you this now. I'm going to unload an insane amount of ordnance into this here cathedral or, or whatever this is right here, right now. I mean, I, I don't think that, the, I don't know what this is, I don't know why it's here, and I, and I don't care. All I know is, is that whatever it is in there, and it needs to die now. I know nothing's going to probably get killed here, but you know what, this is going to make me feel better. And we need to unload the weight anyways, so I'm just going to unload a couple thousand rounds, and maybe all of my missiles, and this, <laughs> we're going to go home, and we're going to try to figure out what this is. Okay, sound like good plan to you, Alfred? I'm in full agreement with your sound course of actions. I must say, Master Wolf and Ray, you displayed a vast quantity of courage and fortitude when placed in this recent hostile environment. Certainly, your past experience of the minor wars was self-evident while you were investigating the anomaly. I grow in confidence and respect for you, as you continue to show the personal character it takes to be a space engineer. I am glad that you have survived, and the data we were able to gather will go a long way in discovering what is happening here in the wolf system. So what will our mighty space engineer do next? Will he go home and discover that the great tarantula exists? Who knows? But I can tell you this, that I'm gonna continue making a lot more of these things since we're gonna progress this story to the next level. As you can see in here in season three, things have really heated up, you know? I mean, the space engineer is about ready to get up off the planet we have a new spaceship coming up and it should be able to make an interplanetary flight but these are clips that you can see from some of the more famous or some of the more viewed episodes of the past I like think three of these are from episode from season one the episodes were from where I really didn't know what I was doing I just kind of had the ambition to do it and then there was the one season two and I got one from season three which I think is really developing quite nicely so, as always, like every other YouTube guy you know, 
please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.